What is up, DCS crew? We are going to go ahead and take a look at an offering from Artisan Cutlery and your boy, Dylan Mallory. So, um, this is something that I have actually been really interested in checking out. Um, Dylan had actually brought one of these over uh, to my place when uh, we were hanging out a little bit. And I told him I wanted to review one. Um, somehow, one got into the uh, Apex Pass Around, which, by the way, shout out to the Apex, Apex Pass Around. Um, and uh, miraculously found its way to my doorstep. So, here it is. This is Artisan Cutlery's um, Archeo. But... This is not your standard Archeo. It's the non-locking version. And it's really cool. It's got a retaining pin, uh, awesome action. It's a flipper like the standard Archeo, contoured handles, VG10 raindrop Damascus. It's got a lot going for it. So let's go ahead and take a moment, let the credits roll, and get to talking about this knife from Dylan Mallory. <laughs> Welcome back to the video. Now, as I mentioned before, we are checking out the Artisan Cutlery uh, Archeo. This is the non-locking uh, variant. And in this particular case, the uh, model number is 1821NL-BUC. It is made in China by Artisan Cutlery, who also uh, provides knives through their budget subsidiary, uh, CJRB. So, uh, that said, typically what you do is you get the box, you get the knife, you get a really cool uh, satchel or, or whatever for it. You get a nice little uh, setup there. And you get this card right here, which on one side it talks about care and maintenance for the knife itself. And on the other side, it tells you a little bit about the specs of the knife. In this case, it states it has a Damascus blade. The blade hardness is between 58 and 60 HRC. Um, that's the, uh, the, the Rockwell hardness scale, by the way. Um, the handle material is G10. It has a ceramic ball bearing pivot, pivot and um, for some reason it says it's a liner lock and it's lockless, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, they use CNC machinery to go ahead and make this and this is uh, part of the model line 1821NL, which is the Archeo, uh, the non-locking, which is the NL designation on that one, okay? So, uh, a little bit about this. Let me go ahead and put this to the side. And by the way, your boy has, um, your boy Dylan has actually opened up a store. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, the information on the screen so you can go ahead and see it. He's got decals, he's got shirts, he's got hats, he's got mugs, and he's also got uh, hashtag swipe right. <laughs> Guys, um, that's been a bit of an ongoing gag with him, and uh, it's 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 really nice to see that he actually put that onto a shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and pick one up. You might want to go ahead and check it out too. He does all of his drawings, so um, the logo, the drawings that you see on there, that's all him. Go ahead and support a brother out without having to go ahead and pick up a knife. I'm gonna pick up uh, a shirt. I'm, I'm gonna try and pick up uh, a swipe right shirt so I can have it anytime I see him and embarrass the hell out of him. So uh, back to the knife now. Um, just a quick um, rundown on the, the lengths. Now, we're looking at a, um, a blade length of 3.3 inches. We're looking at a, uh, a handle length of about seven and a half. Well, excuse me. Whoa. What am I talking about? Okay. Sorry. 3.8 3 inches uh, and an overall length of eight and a half inches. And um, I know that because I have another knife that's very similar to it. And um, I was looking online and checking out some of the... Uh, the, the, the specs on the knife and I was like, man, that, that's, that's gotta be wrong. So I actually pulled out a measurement and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is, I'm putting this right here. Yeah, this is just about eight inches. It's just under it. It's, um, I wanna say about 8.4-ish. And it reminded me of a knife that's very similar that he actually designed, which is the CJRB Centros. And you've seen this a few times here on the channel. I'm gonna put it right next to it so uh, you can see what it is that I'm talking about. It is literally yeah, it is literally almost the same size as the CJRB Centros, okay? So I'm gonna leave that up there for a size comparison, put a couple other ones. This is the uh, the Kershaw Bare Knuckle, uh, very similar in size as well, as you can see, 14C28 and steel, as opposed to the D2 on this. And let me see here, what else do I have? This is the Protec TR3, another badass uh, knife. This is USA made, 154CM steel from Protec Knives in uh, California, if I'm not mistaken. Shout out to Dave Wattenberg, my boy uh, Derek, and Matt from Cutting Edge uh, Knives, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, okay, one last thing. 
Spyderco Para 3. This one I've done a couple things to. I have added an MXG gear clip, uh, MXG gear clip, and uh, I put a sharpening uh, choil over here. Went ahead and sharpened it on the KME. Has a nice little edge there. All right, so let me take this away and we can move forward. So this is the non-locking version. So like I said, um, typically it's 1821, ATZ uh, 1821 would be the model designation NL for the non-locking variants. They come in a couple of different versions. You have um, this version is about eight and a half inches overall. And then you have a smaller version available with uh, just under a three inch blade. It is a 2.875 inch blade. Um, and they have an exclusive with uh, orange and black G10 and uh, the Damascus blade on uh, Knife Center. So be sure to go ahead and check that out as well. So um, back onto the nitty gritty. So this has a, uh, a ball bearing pivot. Okay, so I'm not sure if it's ceramic or steel. Uh, I'm assuming that for the price, uh, you're gonna get uh, one of the two. I, I would have to take this apart, and I, I, in all honesty, I don't own it, so I don't wanna go ahead and butcher it by doing that. You have uh, two screws on this side, two screws on this side. You have the uh, the pivot, which has a screw on one side, and the proprietary uh, pivot with the artisan cutlery symbol that is not only on the blade, but is on the pivot as well. This part is anodized purple, and you have a titanium anodized clip that, that is similar to the standard uh, Arkeo uh, line, okay? Now, this little hole that you see here uh, has uh, two, re uh, well, it has two uh, reasons for being there. Number one, it is meant to either use this pin to lock it, like so, or once it has been removed, like so, go ahead and you drop it and you put the pin back in like so and it keeps it from opening okay so this stays in your pocket it stays from opening while this pin is in there you take it out you can open it beautiful action by the way and uh it closes really well too just wanted to go ahead and point that out um and it stays locked as long as the pin is inserted into the knife. You can't uh, insert it while it's halfway. Um, it does have to either stay locked or stay on the open position. So that's actually really cool. Um, true story. Um, Eric and I were at, were at um, what was it? Uh, Blade of 2019, Blade Show 2019. I wanna say it was Battle Horse Knives. And we uh, met up with a guy who um, used to create knives for the uh, Boy Scouts. It was a very common knife. It was called the Tree Frog. And uh, they used a very similar design with this pin. And um, the, the reason why is because before they used stuff like Swiss Army knives, which do I have mine here? Yeah, I do. Uh, Non-locking Swiss Army knives. They actually had a knife that used to lock, but they wanted to go ahead and find something that didn't have a standard lock, like, you know, a liner lock or even something that's, you know, like a button lock, uh, that sort of thing. So what um, was originally designed was the tree frog. And basically what you would do is you would open the knife Okay, and then you would insert this pin, effectively locking it in place so that you can do what you needed to do. And then once you were done, you would take it out, close the knife, put the pin back in, and it was safely closed until you needed to use it again. But they say that, you know, uh, Boy Scouts got all in their feelings and they started to emasculate a little bit. And then um, they, they stopped using that and they start, started using uh, Swiss Army knives that were not unlocking. And then they, I think they stopped using that altogether as well. So I don't know where they are right now, but it was a pretty cool conversation what I had with them. The guy was eccentric to say the least, but it was an interesting conversation because that's how I found out about this kind of lock. Now, another variant of lock that you've seen this on is uh, Dirk Pinkerton's design through Artisan Cutlery, and that is a proponent that has a large and a small uh, version. But unlike uh, this particular knife, the proponent was a frame lock. And um, aside from the frame lock, it had uh, this built in to kind of reinforce that frame lock. So no matter what, you basically had a, the, the equivalent of a fixed blade because you had this pin that was in and you had the frame lock as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. In this case, a pin is, is, is perfectly fine for this kind of uh, EDC knife. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up again so you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, now um, the clip itself is anodized titanium and that's been anodized purple. 
you have the anodized pivot collars on both sides, and then you have the backspacer that's right back here that has this little cutout with a little loop so that you can go ahead and either keep this uh, on there or you can add yourself a little lanyard. Um, I'm not a big fan of lanyards, so it's cool to see that they went ahead and they just ended up using this cord uh, with the, uh, the little retaining pin here and they just uh, tied it from here. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, now, I'm going to put this down and show you that you have um, right here, you have a uh, your pivot screw, that's T8. You have two screws in the back. One is T6, the other is T6, and then you have two on this side as well that hold the backspacer together, and that is pretty much it. The inside does have liners um, on both sides. It is non-locking, so you don't see any locking mechanisms here. Um, there is a bit of a detent, so you really have to, what am I doing? The retaining pin is on. So, you know, you really have to, you know, put some pressure to it, you know, and then, like, if you do it enough, it is gonna close, but it's not something that it's just gonna, you know, close like it's it's got nothing behind it. There is a little bit of tension there. Um, you know, it's it's there is a little bit of a detent. Um, and in all honesty, it reminds me a little bit of the Monterey Bay knives, uh, the Ray Laconico design. I, I believe it's called the EWC, and I reviewed that a little bit earlier this year. Uh, the main you know switch being that that one was a front flipper, and this is just a standard flipper. So. Um, back to this. So um, the weight on this guy is four ounces, which seems like a lot, but once this is actually in your pocket, uh, much like the Centros from CJRB, which I believe is a little bit heavier, this kind of disappears. It's um, it's very svelte. It's uh, it's it's skinny. Uh, it's lean. I'll say it like that. It's not skinny. It's lean. Um, it's it feels really good in, in in the hand and it disappears in the pocket because of the way that it's been constructed. Uh, Dylan is an excellent uh, designer. He designs all of his uh, his uh, knives and he shows you know li literally drawings and stuff of how everything is taken care of. So he when he gets it he you know he holds it in his hand and he he basically tweaks it based on how his design would fit in the hand and these fit extremely well in the hand whether you have the archeo whether you have you know the centros any of his knives um they, they they fit really really well in the hand um so the um yeah that, that's basically it that i wanted to talk about with this particular knife um, they do have three different versions. They have uh, the uh, black G10, they have a flat carbon fiber, and then they have this blue gray, which I like a lot because of the fact that most people, when they're gonna use blue and they're gonna you know, combine it with something else, they don't combine it with gray. I like it because it's not quite gray and it's not quite blue. Uh, both of them shine out just enough and there's a little bit of, of layering that you can see in the G10. And I really, really like what they do with that. And I also like the fact that this is contoured. So whether you get the black G10 or the blue gray G10, um, this is gonna be contoured. And this is probably my favorite color and look on this particular knife. And it's weird because you'd think that the blue gray G10 and then the purple you know, accents would kind of throw it off, but it really doesn't. And when you go ahead and you combine it with the, uh, the, the, the Damascus blade, um, it looks really, nice i mean in, in my opinion it's 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 pretty badass and it's gonna do work too this is gonna take take an extremely sharp edge and the reason why i know is that this particular vg10 uh unlike a company name you know Savivi, yeah. um <laughs> they do announce what their vg10 uh um, excuse me their uh damascus is made from and yes it, i let the cat out of the bag prematurely it is uh this is raindrop damascus uh with a vg10 core so um vg10 if you don't know um it's used in a lot of very high-end knives by you know companies like shun uh that use them for you know like kitchen knives and even um the uh let me see knives like the delica the endura uh, that sort of uh, the dragonfly uh, tube from Spyderco use VG10. It takes an extremely sharp edge, and it's it's very good with regards to corrosion resistance. So um, to have something like that for this, it's actually a really nice design, and it's got you know a, a really good quality blade to it. And it's not easy to be able to obtain VG10 as much anymore. A lot of these Japanese companies that were that were supplying um, a lot of the VG10 to the market realized that there were a lot of Chinese companies that were seeing that, oh, you know, that's like the big thing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start using that. So they're like, no, 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 no. I don't want to go ahead and provide this to you anymore. 
So a lot of those companies started going to N690. They started using American 154 CM. And a lot of them just went cheap and they just went D2 or they used K110 or one of the other variants of D2 because that's basically the same thing. Uh, case in point, CGRB going with D2 on variants like the CGRB Centrals. So um, it's nice to be able to see that because you don't really see this on a lot of newer uh, folders anymore simply because of the fact that Japan isn't... Um, is a little bit more strict on who gets their VG10. They don't want to see it misrepresented represented or even malrepresented. So they're very choosy on who gets it. It's nice to know that uh, Artisan Cutlery, you know, works not only in their, their craftsmanship, their, you know, quality control and their heat treatment of this uh, particular Damascus to be able to include VG10 with the blessing from the makers in Japan who actually provide the VG10 to them. Okay, and yes, VG10 is exclusive to Japan. They can probably clone it in a bunch of other places, but the original chemical compound, that came from uh, uh, Japan, okay? Now, um, with regards to quality control issues, there have been people that have, been, have told me that, you know, um, the biggest issue with paying for something uh, from CGRB and even artisan cutlery is the fact that sometimes the fit and finish is off, okay? And, you know, I've had a knife or two that has had some issues. Uh, Dylan had one of his own knives that he picked up from Artisan, um, you know, have a few issues as well. But the truth is, it was really nothing that maybe, you know, taking it apart, looming it, you know, uh, putting it back together, you know, centering issues, that sort of thing that you could take care of at the house, uh, you know, once you own it. As provided that you have like a decent bit kit, like, uh, you know, I have these Torx bits and where's my T6? Oh, right here. Um... Provided that you have a decent, you know, set, and I actually recommend two. So I have that, and then I have like a secondary, uh, you know, big kit, or even like my Weeha. Um, I do that because, you know, sometimes uh, part of obtaining a knife and getting it is maintaining it. So, you know, you obtain it, you maintain it. You take it apart, you lube it, you sharpen it, you know, you put it back together, and you gotta use quality parts because who's gonna pay over $100, you know, 50, 100, 150, 200 plus, for a knife and then not be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, sharpen it or, you know, uh, take it apart. And I mean, these tools are not expensive. I mean, I can tell you that this cost me what, with all the bits and stuff, it cost me like less than 30 bucks. The same for these as well, these boneless ones. And these are actually made in the US, by the way. Um, so uh, that said, if you like Mallory designs, you're gonna like this knife. If you like knives like the EWC from Monterey Bay Knives, and that's that Ray Laconico design I, I talked to you about earlier with that front flipper, you're gonna like this uh, knife. If you like contoured scales with a G10, you're gonna like this knife. Uh, if you like something different like this blue gray, you're gonna like this knife. If you're looking for a smaller variant, you might not like this version, but you'll like the smaller ones. <laughs> It's, it's, it's hard to not like this. Now, um, me personally, my only gripe on these, okay, is the fact that number one, I'm not really big on these standard, like these titanium clips. They're very nice, but they're just, I'm used to a deep carry clip. If you notice, you know, it's something that's very common with my knives, okay? I mean, even, even the Centros. Like I carry these often because of the fact that they disappear in my pocket and they don't have any billboarding that's, you know, very prevalent. Yeah, the, the Kershaw writing is on here, but it's it's subdued because it's black, you know, and then there's nothing on this one. So um, that's, that's one issue that I don't like. Um, another thing is, you know, when it's going in and out of a pocket, I fear that one day, you know, this, uh, this little piece of string here is going to come off and then the retaining pin is either going to get stuck in my jeans to get washed out when I, uh, you know, put it to wash or it's going to fall out one day and I'm never going to find it. And then that's basically going to leave me with a knife that will kind of lock because it, you know, it does open and it, and it will lock a little bit, but you know, a little bit uh, of pressure there and it will fall down. The only thing is when you're using it, okay, and say you're going to go ahead and put pressure on it and you don't have the pin in here, you can still put a little bit of pressure here and it will move but it's got that flipper tab here to protect you from the knife, uh, from the blade actually falling from here, okay? So that's something to consider. Even if you don't have this in here, you know, you do have that as a safety point, all right? And then you can just kind of just, whoop, and it's done. Now, um, one other thing I do want to mention is the sharpening troll. The way that the sharpening troll is, it actually juts out to, to the point where the, uh, the edge ends right here. And if you are sharpening, Okay, typically, huh, let me see if I can find something that has a straight line to it. Um, 
Okay, ah, I'll use this. Okay, this happens to be a card for KME sharpeners. So when you're sharpening, your KME sharpener is gonna get to right about here and it's gonna start, sh start sharpening and stuff. The grind has been designed so that it's a flat grind and it kind of rises up here. And so when you are grinding, um, you're not gonna go ahead and touch this part. You're just gonna be able to go ahead and th hit this right here and then just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going right to the edge. So I do wanna go ahead and uh, make that distinction clear. Um, that being said, that's pretty much all that I have to say about the Archeo. Um, I myself, you know, I'm a fan of non-locking knives because I mean, it's something that I can use in the office. I might actually pick up the, uh, the knife center version. Um, I believe that one's going for about $99. If you're going to get this directly from Artisan Cutlery, it's going to about cost you about 125 bones and some change. Um, but if they come out with this variant on the websites like Blade HQ, Knife Center, that sort of thing. Uh, some are already selling variants of this, but I haven't really seen the blue and gray G10 with this, uh, the you know, the purple um, uh, accents, okay? But this will probably run you about that too. So you're looking at a sub $100 life, just, just under the $100. Um, I know that the exclusive from Knife Center is at about 99 and change. So you may want to go ahead and check that out. That has a black and orange G10 with the same... Um, Damascus blade. It's the VG10 core uh, with raindrop Damascus. So that said, thank you so much for checking this out. This is the uh, artisan cutlery non-locking Archeo from your boy uh, Dylan Mallory. And look at that. It kind of goes right above my uh, my logo right there. It looks pretty cool. That would be cool. If I saw like a bat signal and it looked like that, I'd be like, yo, that shit is sick. Now, that being said, go ahead and check out his website. He does have some merchandise on there or um, uh, send me a message if you have any questions on how to go ahead and get there or even if you have any questions on this particular knife. Uh, you can reach me on Instagram at Daily Carry Solutions. You can comment below or you can reach me on my website, use the contact page and uh, it'll go ahead and send me a question to um, my email, which is dailycarrysolutions at gmail.com, to which I will respond as quickly as possible. Now, that being said, it doesn't matter whether you have something from Artisan Cutlery, if it's from, you know, something like CJRB, or even something that's American, okay? But just remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. Guys, you've been great. I'm Carlos, this is DCS, and I gotta go, because I got some stuff to do. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.